with God. If she's 42, for her pension, you get it at uh, how many years? 16. How many years left? It's 18. It's 18. So we need to go down now. We consider. We ask ourselves such questions. Are you hearing me? Because I think we are just living and we are not aware. Can you, can you ask your neighbor, how old are you? How old are you? You will see that you don't have time now on earth. Don't live like you live forever. Alright. Alright, she's 42. If she has to be 70, she's left with only 28 years. Is it too many years? Is it too many years? Many times we are not checking them. Oh. When your child grow, like, I have my daughter, she's 26. Already she holds 27 now. She's 27 now on the 1st April. When your child grow, you know what she's telling you? When your child is growing, the, the, that child is telling you, die. Your child, when it's growing, say, is telling you, die. Your child, say, you are old, you die. Are you hearing me? So, you, sometimes you must look at the age of your children or, or of your mate. You will know that your time is going. You hear what I'm trying to tell you? And uh, you know, because we are not doing that, we are, we are no longer careful to how we are living. And this, is really affecting our Christian life. If now you are 40, uh, people, other people are dying when they are 59. You are left with 19 years to die. And you must die. Yeah? Tell everybody, you must die one day. Because we, we are not here to stay. Do you know that if you find that, you'll be, you'll be careful because it means your time is close. I, I don't know if you are hearing me. We are coming from the funeral of uh, my mother-in-law. There's something that my father-in-law did there. After we bury, he said, he asked the grave, which is close to where Mama, she's buried. And I said, what is it that is telling us? The grave is there. When you are buried there, there's a grave here. It was dug, so it was closed because he said he wants to be buried there. Already he's telling us that very soon we have to go back to bury him there. If we have that, we will mind about our soul. Are you hearing that? I want to talk about your soul today. And I know it's the message that you are not here for. Because you are here for, I want blessing. I want a car, a house. Tell somebody, say, your soul is important. If we read Matthew 10, and we read verse 28, I want to teach you this. Matthew what? Matthew 10. Verse what? 28. 28. Go there. It says, And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Amen. But rather be afraid of him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Listen, 
ga go lo le bo ife ye a khonang go senya mmele le moya moleteng wa mollo let us pray father thank you for your word in jesus name amen amen if we read here and we read again we will find that man is limited man's ability ends in earth on earth he can kill the body but there is life ahead where we have read it shows that there is life ahead there is hell and heaven so the bible says we sometimes make mistakes where we are afraid of the man who is limited we end up ending our life in hell. And the Bible says we Bible must be afraid because in hell still there will be a body and soul. So in other words, when you see yourself so after death, after the men kill you, you are still going to see yourself, your body, and your soul and your soul will be having a body your soul is you is you who are staying in the body hallelujah amen my friend without your soul you are not allowed on earth here that's why you are supposed to be buried so a man can kill the body listen but he can't kill your soul Meaning that even if you are killed here, you are still alive. No one can kill you. But the Bible says, let us be afraid of the one who is able to kill even the soul. The one who can even kill the soul. You know, when I've read this, I found that many times the way we are living it shows that we don't fear God. We fear men. So this is the lesson we are giving. That your soul is important. Hallelujah. Amen. If you read Matthew 16, not first 16 there, and you read from 25, just go 16. And you read 25. Let me read for you there. The Bible says. The Bible says. For whoever is bent on saving his life. Mm. Shall lose it. And whoever loses his life. For my sake shall find it. Amen. 26 says for. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world mm. and forfeit his life? Can you see the verse there? Amen. Or what will a man give in an exchange of his blessed life in the kingdom of God? The blessed Amen. life in the kingdom of God is soul. Is the salvation of your soul. If you can read it with another version, it says, what will profit a man if he gains the whole life, the whole world, and lose his soul? Yeah, Jesus was teaching, he said, it's so important to see that your soul, you don't lose it. Jesus was saying, there is nothing on earth which can be equated with your soul. Do you know that the preaching we are preaching nowadays is no longer focusing on our souls. It's focusing in our body. You need a car for your body. You need, you need food for your But there is this
this soul you have that needs the word of God is sent. Hallelujah. Amen. So many challenges that you are facing are there to question you if you are ready to lose your life for Christ. But if you are ready to lose your life for Christ, you will save your soul. The mistakes that we are doing we are rating many things than our soul. Jesus shows that your soul is important. Tell your neighbor, say, my friend, your soul is important. There are challenges in life, whatever you might be facing, are there so that you lose your soul. The character you can develop, the lifestyle, I mean your environment, any kind of challenge you are facing, are there so that you lose your soul. So we are around to rate our soul better than anything else. Hallelujah. Amen. In Acts 3, from verse 22, let's go there. Acts 3, verse 22, here is Peter speaking. He says, as Moses said to the forefathers, the Lord God will raise up for you a prophet from among your brethren. Amen. And in him you shall listen to and understand by hearing and heed in all things whatever he tells you. And it shall be that every soul that does not listen to and understand by hearing and heed that prophet shall be utterly exterminated from among the people. Can you see Amen. that verse there? Le Moses also Moshe spoke to the people of Israel and the elders that as God has raised me there is Jesus who will come if somebody does not hear that in other words if somebody does not have faith if somebody does not believe in him, he will be utterly removed. I just want to speak in a way you understand. Utterly removed. Listen to this. This shows that there's a place called hell we can go if we don't believe in him. Jesus came Moses said the prophet that God will be raised. And if you can read going down, it talks about Jesus who came. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the scripture has been quoted by Peter when people were talking about they are drunk. He began to preach that this that is happening is because of the same Jesus he crucified. But he carried on continuing that this man Jesus was there in the scriptures before he was spoken by Moses that there will be a prophet that will be raised. If you don't listen to that one, you will be utterly separated. You know, when I read about hell, I found that it's a place which is separated where you will suffer and no one can save you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you read 24, you say, indeed, all the prophets from Samuel and those who came afterwards as many have spoken also promise and foretold and proclaim these days. Are you seeing the verse there? Verse 26, it was to you first that God sent his servant and son Jesus when Amen. he was raised up. Can you see that? To Amen. bless you in turning every one of you from the wickedness and evil. 
tsale o modimo a rometse Jesu rata le fasing a tala sekolle o re le tole di tsela tsa lena tsa dimpi le temo go yena I want you to look at this If we carry on with wickedness If we carry on with evil It means we don't hear him It means we didn't accept him So our soul Can be separated with God Listen to this The Bible says at the beginning Don't be afraid of men Some of you You are you are connected with men that makes you to sin and to do evil. Some of you are living a wrong life because you want to please those men you are afraid. But there is Jesus and there is God that you need to be afraid so that you stop living a wicked life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm here to tell you that from now on you need to check your soul because you are not here forever. There is a heaven to attend. There is a heaven to attend. You are not here to live forever. When I read 1 Peter 2 11 to 12 it says Conduct yourself properly because there will be a day of God that you will come to do inspection. Our God is coming to inspect our soul. I don't know if you're hearing me. Whether we believed in him, whether we live a right life, I'm here to challenge you that there will be a day that our inspection will be done by the one who can see through our body. We are limited. We, men, we can see outwards. But we can all see through. There are things inside us that we can plant in us. Everybody can still render us good. Everybody can still proclaim that we are good people. But there is only one God who can do inspection when he checks your heart. He must find that you are worthy to enter heaven. Your soul must live forever. Listen to this. In church nowadays, we, we, it's like we can't preach sin. We, we, we cannot call people to repent. And, and people, people are coming to do whatever they can do. And they go back to their sin. Sometimes we spend time prophesying people who are sinners who are going to hell. And whereas God is checking, there will be a day of inspection. Hallelujah. Amen. As I say, my friend, what is it that we will find that God will find when he inspects you? Is he going to find you are righteous or you are right standing with God? What is it that you will find? Is he going to find the nature of God in you? Because your soul will be judged by the living God. That's what I say, my friend. Are you sure you're a Christian? One of the days of just coming to church to seek for the blessing. We must establish a relationship with Jesus. We must live a life that we will thank God even after our death. Hallelujah. Amen. Ask your neighbor. Are you sure you're a Christian? And he's saying one. When we read Romans 7, from verse 19 to 20, Paul was speaking about sin. He said, If I fail to practice what I desire to do, and I do the evil deeds which I do not desire to do, 
It means it's no longer I who live. It's a sin that lives in me. Listen to this sin. Enter your soul and rule your soul. If God inspects you and find you as a hypocrite, a hypocrite is a person who comes to church but is still ruled by a sin. A sin is there to control your heart, to control your life. Many of you, you are fighting one sin. You want to get out from that sin. When you fight, you want to do a good deed, but you are failing to do it. It means sin has dominated. Sin can arrest you. Listen to this. It's not that Christians they don't know where they are wrong. They know because they ask God forgiveness several times. But they cannot get out from where they have been arrested. Because the sin is there. It has arrested you. And that sin, when God inspected it, you found it in your soul. That's always my friend. What is it that is controlling your life? Some of you are controlled by your pride. Some of you are controlled by your lies. Some of you are controlled by what you believe in. And this is changing your character. And the character of Jesus is not manifesting. We need to go to a point where we go down. We check our hearts. Are we sure when we are coming to church? Is it because we want to go to heaven? Or we are coming to church because we want to solve our problems? If we want to solve our problems, when our problems are solved, we will go back from God. We need people who are saying, this is my challenge. This is my sin. Let me confess it good and come Otherwise, my soul is important than my terriers. Because many of us, our focus is materials and we are losing our soul. I'm here to tell you, your materials are useless. Because many people, they had materials and they die, they leave them behind. People had money, they left them behind. People had cars, they left them behind. What is important is your soul. I don't know if you are hearing me. Ask your neighbor. Do you think you still have many years to live? And if you still have how many? And how capilla mean why I mean at Rauru with a pilemica? So, why are you hiding your sin? The Bible says, He who hides his sin will never prosper. Because the sin will come up and arrest that person. You can check your life. You will see that some of your characters is because of your, even your decision making are being affected by the sin in your soul. If you sin, that sin is fighting your soul. It might be pleasing your flesh, but it's against your soul. Your flesh doesn't mind because it is God is own place is the grave. But your soul is so important. And Satan is fighting your soul. I mean, we need Christians who are saying, I cannot carry on sinning. I cannot carry on lying. I cannot I mean, get out from the sin that enters your soul and bring out the character that God hates. Because Jesus died on the cross so that your soul will be washed and become clean. You are still the same appearance. But God is looking inside you. Your character is important. I don't know if you are hearing me. Even your amen is dead. I say your amen is dead. As I say, my friend, what, what kind of sin? That you are doing is in your soul. When we read Luke 12, from verse 16, I want us to read it. There was a man there 
No, na le mutu mola. I say, look what. Twelve. Verse what. Six ten. You know. Then he told them a parable, saying, "The land of a rich man was fertile and yielding plentifully." And he considered and debated within himself, Amen. "What shall I do? I have no place in which to gather together my harvest." And he said. I will do this and I will pull down my storehouses and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain or produce and my goods. And I will say to my soul, so you have got, you have many good things laid up uh, for many years. Take your ease, Amen. eat, drink, and enjoy your merrily. Enjoy yourself merrily. But God said to him, you fool, this very night, the, the messengers of God will demand your soul of you. And all the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? Amen. Whose will they be? Can you see we spend time gathering things and then sometimes we gather them in a wrong way. The house you build it. It belongs to somebody. Can you tell us your neighbor? I'm sure you won't house. like that. The house you build it. Belongs to someone. You know, uh, can I tell you something maybe? Yeah, you won't like it. You know, if a rich man die, uh, and then maybe you've got two children. You know, sometimes if you check there, you will see these children, they don't cry. They don't cry. They just, they just say, oh, my father was good. He was very, very good. Because there's a property money, whatever. Sometimes when you see people crying in the corner, it's when the breadwinner die. They say, ah, so, so who's going to buy me bread? And, you know, usually many people they, they've got different kind of reason yes others is because of love but usually if a breadwinner die there automatically they will cry because it was breadwinner so no one is winning breadwinner but a rich man when he dies you know Someone will be thinking about his jacket. Another one will just wake up in the middle of the night and go to the garage and, and check the cars that are there. And begin to shake his ass. Papa, look a little much. Even when he was wrong. But because he left my table. So, you know, how you live your life here. You are, you are struggling to build something for someone. I'm not saying don't do that. You are the one who's changing your generation. No, sir. Eh? I'm saying when you are busy changing your generation, don't be robbed by what you are struggling to put together. Because your soul is important. Hallelujah. Amen. This man, he gathered all. By the time when he want to sit down, God said, you've wasted time. Your time is finished. Come up, come up now. And then already he was depending on what he was gathering, but he forget the life he's supposed to live for his soul. Ask your neighbor. If you pass now, where are you going to spend your eternity? You know, I went to another funeral. I was disturbed. When people are saying, this brother 
I was in Pulukwan in a place called Blood River. He was very good. He was very good. This brother was standing very close to me. He said, These people are lying. He is my friend. We, we used to steal together. Do you know how he died? I don't know. He said, No. He was stabbed when he was stealing. And I said, oh, So what is that in store? He said, no. He said I took it. I, I ran away with him. He's, but he was stabbed when he was. I'm still having it. I said, oh, so, Are you going to enjoy to have it? He said, I'm not happy. I'm, I'm angry because these people are lying. People who are talking, they are Christians. Christians love to hide and shield you. They, they, they love to say you, you went to heaven. But can you just allow those Christians to say what they mean? Can you just live a right life so that Christians, when they say this was a child of the living God, went to heaven, they mean it. You know, this brother said, no, 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 no. no. This, it does, these people are lying. And I, it was a proof to me because he was called and he said, the friend, come and speak. He went forward like this. And said, uh, and then it's him for. But why did you go this way? We you know, were stealing really good. But anyhow, we were stealing really good. But anyhow, time is time. Time is time. And he went, he went for. He went and he shamed all those Christians. I don't know if you're hearing me. I get Sometimes when we are still saying, this person is a VG. Your friend is there. She did three abortions. When we say, this person is going to heaven. Your friend say, even breaks place in the house. This person goes, guys, went to heaven. When we are still speaking of you, there is someone there who is a witness of God. So that when God judges you, you will meet the one who knows you. Can I tell you this? There's no, nobody you can say, nothing you can say before God. The day you die, when you are claiming to go to heaven, if you are joining you in the church, you will find your boyfriend standing. I says, oh, we are going. And then where are you going? Come here, you go regular man. I want to buy eggs for you. There they are closing there. At the gate they are closing. And your boyfriend is standing when there. Boyfriend is and, and, I, so, so, and, you and then you know, and you, know you die. And you, you left you know, your boyfriend you there. Boyfriend this is the right time of living a right life. Don't temper with your life. Your life is so important. You cannot hide anything. You will meet the people you lie to. The people you rob. The people you fight. They will delay you to enter heaven. It's the right time to mind about your soul. Don't allow anybody to rob you. Live a life of square, fair and square. Heaven will be your home. God bless you. I said God bless you. I want to make an altar call. You need to come to Jesus. Come now. Don't waste your time. Your soul is important. We'll be playing, singing song here. Come, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Gone are the days of wasting time of placing friends. Such friends, you will meet them there. Your soul is important. Jesus loves you. 
Jesus died for you. Don't look at anybody. Come. Don't look at your status. Don't look at your position. Check your life. You are needed. God is calling you. Come. 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 Amen. Can you sing the song that Mama sing? can be surprised the prophecy that you have been given many years ago coming to pass in your life. Amen. It, it might be the sin. Amen. It might be the sin Amen. that Satan is using to Amen. accuse Amen. you. Today, God has been waiting for you. The decision you have taken is important. Don't judge yourself. Don't look at anybody. It's important. Amen. Lift up your hands, you pray this prayer. Say, Holy Father. Holy Father. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. But today. But today. I come to you. I come to you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Wash me clean. Wash me clean. With the precious blood of Jesus. With the precious blood of Jesus. Wash my sins away. Wash my sins away. I believe from now on. I believe from now on. I'm a new creature. I'm a new creature. Write my name. Write my name. In the book of life. In the book of life. Thank you, Father, for salvation. Thank you, Father, for salvation. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. Congratulations. You can go back. God bless you. Jesus.
Keep watching Charis 24-7.